Hi everyone, this is a follow up on the phone I put on show yesterday, the Albus Work Zurich AG. Um, I did say at the time that the dial was a bit dodgy and I thought needed a little bit of attention. Anyhow, I decided to have a look inside and also I had a look at the rotary phone forums because they do a little write up on this phone and I thought it'd be rather interesting to do a video of the insides as they are slightly different than what you'd expect to find. Anyhow we'll start off with obviously I took the back off and lo and behold stamped on the back not as a printed piece of paper but printed directly onto the back you've got your circuit diagram I'll linger on there a couple of minutes so if anyone needs that diagram that is the diagram for this phone there's also numbers underneath now also you've got your bell adjuster or not bell adjuster thing that turns it only physically on and turning over I never mentioned this it's got your two positions one shows a bell and the other one shows a B so obviously that would have it set for it to buzz rather than ring you obviously keep the hammers away from, from the gong you just hear, hear it vibrating we have the number I believe I gave you that number yesterday on there as I said yesterday I thought it was a fairly rare phone but I don't know um, it might have been referring to the actual colour but anyhow I was quite impressed now let's have a little look further inside before we get to the dial when you take the bottom off this is what we get it's on a plastic base and the bell has two gongs one inside the other now I believe this idea is also used on certain types of Iskra phones this is also got from uh, rotary phone forums um, now it'd be interesting to note that I believe Iskra was set up by Siemens now remember Siemens now owns Albus work with the make of this phone so the similarity might be because of that mind you the the picture they show of a double gong like this the bell is more of the conventional arrangement with your two coils here there's one coil and um, the movement between the armature is quite small if I can make it work Hmm. it does work but uh, I'm not pressing hard, hard enough at least I think it works there we go bells of two tones and once again after the hammer has struck the bell it's lifted off or it does not rest on the gong Let's see if I can show this a bit better Hmm. I'm not going to pass a comment about my fading eyes. Um, mentioned that too too many times. Just hoping that it can be sorted out with the cataracts. Anyhow, that's what happens. Um, now it's interesting to note that the bells are held in by a nut and a screw through it and also looking at it very carefully notice 
that the nut has been sealed off with a touch of paint so as far as it's concerned this has not been undone to adjust the bell so these are obviously factory adjusted a touch of paint is put on to lock the nut in place your terminals that is the 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 line cord what we're looking at and the three other leads go to the receiver obviously the capacitor mind you what you probably notice is the lack of wires there you've got your uh, cradle switch switch spring set now I'm going to turn it over and I was quite amazed this in fact screws into the, the body the two screw holes that uh, the screws are completely locked so you're not going to lose them hopefully you're not going to lose them now let's turn him over and look what we've got not a single wire but metal strips serving as contacts and gently soldered onto the important parts you can see under the under the cradle there they're soldered direct to the spring set this operates obviously to the the uh, the plunger of the cabinet or the, the casing you've got um, a disc there which is possibly I haven't proved it I looked at it but this is possibly across the ear earpiece to prevent clicks that is in fact wired well it's wired to the the metal strips you've got a resistor also on the side there anyway what was unusual well this is unusual but apart from that we've got two sets of contacts well I say contacts they're not there they're not contacts at all but they act as connectors to your dial and there are the four connectors which would engage with these four there to connect up to the dial obviously the dial off normals and your pulsing springs and while we're talking about the dial I can't make it operate because I said yesterday I've only got one pair of hands this doll is typical of certain continental dolls where as you dial the digit one the and I'll put this down so I can show it a bit better the wheel there turns around and makes and breaks the pulse springs now as you dial one it in fact pulses twice well it appears to pulse twice but in this circuit obviously this idea is to get the dial up to speed that's one theory and it's controlled as one pulse only by that spring there the spring going across there And this idea is used on several dials from the continent and um, it's well made once again very plasticky the date on there 
is 56. You've got your governor, like all, all dolls have got. And that's your, con your, uh, your make and break spring set. And the, and the thing that goes the cam, I suppose you could call it, that goes round and causes these springs to make and break. And that spring there comes to play after the first pulse. So you only send one and the original pulse is masked. So you get extra pulse. And this is, we think, to make sure the dial is up to speed. There's your contacts. Two spring sets. Spring sets on the left are the dial off normal. There's the name down there, which is the symbol of Albus work. Also, it's interesting to note that, and I'll see if I can find it again. It's on one of these, it might, be, it might be that screw there. But one of the screws that fixes the mechanism to the base. Oh, there we are, there. It's that one there. That screw there has got a little touch of paint on it again. I think there's a bit of paint on that one. It's to just lock the screws in so they don't shake loose. And also they will know if someone's tampered with it by unscrewing it and messing up any any adjustments. Anyhow, this had purely become dry and it was a bit ropey when I tied the dial on it. Now it appears to be okay. Surprising what a little bit of oil would do. Anyhow, that's the dial. Now, as I said before, I've nearly finished. Um, this whole idea, I, I say, I've never come across before. So I was rather pleased to get this. I say it was about 20 years ago, I think. I actually got it. So yeah, I think that's all, all I've got to say on on this. I've got to put the, the pieces back together. The dial has got quite a good way of fixing. Two little hook there so you can leave the screws on the dial place it in just turn it so it goes into those notches and then the this part is what marries up with the dial and you fit it all in anyhow once again thanks for watching any questions please ask I say I, I, I'm not 100% certain about Iskra, but um, I understand some of their phones had a similar idea of double bells. And I believe I've got a phone upstairs which has that double bell, um, which was uh, one of the, and I can't think the model number, but it wasn't by Iskra. It was... Um, Italian phone I believe but there we are many thanks again you know please subscribe any comments please like all the other things you do on YouTube thanks again for watching oh and just a side track huh. I, um, one of my subscribers contacted me to ask me to put the picture of that large gibeum up Unfortunately, the large gibeum is no more. Last summer it decided to pass away. Perhaps possibly because of the age of the plant, I just don't know. It looked okay and then suddenly it went. I've got some youngsters from it still, but it'd be a long time before it gets to that size. So, unfortunately, I've no longer got uh, that large gibeum. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Um, thank you.